What is going on guys, Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today we are taking a deep dive on Joe Tipman, the Jets' new center from Wisconsin. I have Colton Bartholomew on with me to get a little bit more insight on him. Colton covered him during his time at Wisconsin. Let's hop into it. All right, I would like to welcome on Colton Bartholomew. He covers the Wisconsin Badgers for the Badger Extra, Wisconsin State Journal, and Madison.com. Thank you so much for joining me today, Colton. Yeah, anytime. Yeah, so I kind of just wanted to get a couple uh, a couple opinions from you on uh, on our guy Joe Tipman. So, were you surprised to see him as the the first center to come off the board in the draft, or is this kind of what you expected? Yeah, it was tough because you come out of the the last college football season, and it's basically him, John Michael Schmitz, and a couple other guys that were considered that top center in the class. Um, I think during the testing and when teams got to see you know, how much Joe Tippmann was responsible for at Wisconsin. I think that kind of shot him up some boards. So I wasn't too surprised when he was the first center. I figured he was in that second round type of area and what he ended up being like high 40 or early 40s pick. That seemed about right for, for where he was at and what was what where the, the center positions valued in the draft. So I think he went to, uh, you know, just about where he, he should have gone in terms of draft position. Yeah, no, absolutely. And John Michael Schmitz was a, a Jets fan favorite, but they're excited to get into uh, Joe Tipman. And I just kind of wanted to know from you also, what was some of your favorite things about his game, watching him over the last couple of years grow at Wisconsin? Yeah, I think I think number one was Wisconsin in the last you know 30 years, really. It's one of the few college football programs that puts NFL level stuff on a center in terms of responsibilities for making calls at the line in the run and the pass game. So I think that's something that for a guy like Tipman, who came in as like basically offensive lineman, wasn't specifically center that they looked at him for right away, uh, but they just realized very quickly this kid's really smart, this kid's really athletic. Let's put him at you know what is arguably you know first or second most important position on our line at center. Let him grow into that, and you just saw him blossom. I mean, if you look at his senior tape, there's a lot of plays where it's basically he's calling not just the mic and you know different protection schemes. He's calling other things with the offense at the center position, calling out different things in the secondary, things like that. So the the football IQ is probably number one for me. And then just the the ability to use his size on the interior. I mean, it's a rare thing to see a center who's six foot six and you know three hundred plus pounds right now. So I think the fact that he's got the quickness to play to play inside, but then brings that size with him. Uh, he really grew into that body and playing on the interior throughout his time in Wisconsin. Yeah, definitely. One of the things that uh, I think worrisome Jeff fans to to an extent is that size that you brought up. He's six foot six. It's rare that you see someone you know that tall play the position. Do you worry about like leverage at all for him at the next level, or have you seen something from his game that makes you think it's not really going to be an issue for him? I think he's gonna. Have, there's gonna be an adjustment to the NFL, regardless. I mean, there's gonna be some things that he's got to learn technique wise that to kind of shore up. The one thing I will say that. You know, he is tall, yes, but he plays really low. And he's got a ton of bend in his hips. And, you know, he's never had uh, lower body injuries that were really significant. The things that he's dealt with, and you get a, a pulled hammy that he was working with throughout the, the draft season. And then, um, you know, throughout his college career, it was more of a shoulder thing that was kind of a lingering issue. But nothing that would, I think, prevent him from uh, maintaining good leverage and being there in the NFL. I think the thing that he's just going to have to get a little bit more used to is, you know, as good as Big Ten defenses were that he saw, he didn't see a whole lot of great zero and one techs in the Big Ten the past couple of seasons. And, you know, obviously the NFL is full of those. So I think that's something that he's going to have to adjust to a little bit. But I don't think it's going to be a technique issue. I think it's just going to be getting to that NFL level right away. Yeah, and that's kind of something else that I wanted to go into. Do you think he's someone who can start from day one or would he benefit sitting for a year maybe and, and growing his games more behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there would be benefit to him not playing and then kind of figuring things out. But I think just the way that the NFL works now, especially when you're taking a interior offensive lineman second you know, with your second overall pick or with the Jets end up being third. But I think he's probably projected to be number one or our day one starter. And I know they signed Connor McGovern right before the draft to potentially kind of fill in there. And, you know, McGovern's a guy that's also played guard in his career. So I think there might be a nice kind of okay, we have a nice backup plan if Tipman's not there right away, but then if not, you know, McGovern can almost be a swing guard or somebody that can play both of those spots. So I think the Jets are in a good position either way, but I would say for Tipman himself, I think he's a guy that 
mentally is going to be there. I don't think the the challenge of adjusting to NFL offenses is going to be the learning curve is going to be as steep for him as a lot of other guys. I just think that physically he'll have to prove himself in those early weeks that show like, okay, he gets what we're doing in the playbook, but then he can also translate it to the field. Yeah, absolutely. Um, something that the Jets uh, run a lot of is is a wide zone rushing attack, and it seems like his athleticism would be a good fit for that. Is that something you agree with? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Wisconsin, the wide zone has been a thing at Wisconsin for a long time. wasn't as uh, big of a part of the offense in uh, Tippmann's senior year, or well, redshirt junior year, but basically senior year here at Wisconsin. Uh, a lot of what they did was a full lead where he's pulling and becoming a lead blocker on the outside, just kind of showing that athleticism that really kind of stuck out to scouts. But when you're talking about what the Jets have been doing with that wide zone, I think it's going to work perfectly. And when you look at um, Nathaniel Hackett and what he brings, uh, that's what he likes to do. He likes to, you know, try to get running backs one cut, kind of get up and down the field like that. And Tipman, his athleticism and his ability to reach, especially some of those three techs in front of him, that's going to be a big thing of, if you can secure that and create the cutback lane right away for your running back, it helps a lot. So I think Tiffin's going to be able to do that. I think where he might struggle a little bit early on is, like I mentioned before, with some of those true, big, huge zero and one techniques that teams play. But again, we're talking about how often are those guys on the field anymore with the, the sub packages and two down linemen front. So I think those are the times when he might struggle a little bit, but that's a pretty small sample size at this point in the NFL. Yeah, for, for sure. And, uh, you know, the we talk a lot about his rushing attacks, and I, I feel like a lot of the, the clips I've seen from him are him in the run game, but he allowed one sack over the last two years. Can you speak to how he plays in pass pro? Yeah, I think the number one thing he does is is stay, stay so low that when he does eventually fire his hips up and kind of straighten out, uh, he's lifting a defender with him. So I think that's something he does really well. And then I, I know that, going throughout the draft process when, you know, guys get picked apart, you know, if you could be the, the perfect prospect, they'll find something wrong with you. But the one thing that came up somewhat consistently for him is how good he is at re re hand fighting the way they describe it. You know, like that first initial punch, if that didn't work exactly right, getting his hands back inside and getting back into good position. So I think those are the two things that pass pro wise, he did really well. And I think too, and when you look at what NFL teams like to do with their center, he's going to be a guy that, you know, if he doesn't have somebody in front of him, he'll be able to jump out and pick up a blitzer coming off the edge and use that athleticism that I keep talking about, that quickness, and be able to hold up, uh, picking up some guys coming, you know, from depth. So I think he's got a lot of things going for him as a pass protector. And I think something that's a little bit underrated in this game right now is just his ability to know when he's losing and just kind of not – not commit a penalty or not do something dumb, but like if he knows he's going to lose, he falls in a way that is going to trip the defender up too. And, you know, he basically makes a pile if he ends up losing. I know Mel Kiefer during the draft said that, you know, he was on the ground too much. I think sometimes it was intentional because he was trying to kind of make a pile if it wasn't going well. So I think that's something that, you know, you don't think about it's a good thing to be on the ground, but it's the smart way to be on the ground if you have to get there. No doubt. And I love about his game. He seems to have a really high uh, football IQ and you keep talking about his athleticism, which is a huge thing that stands out. I was curious if you think that maybe he has guard flexibility at the next level. I know he played, it was only, I believe 11 snaps in 2020 at, at uh, guard at Wisconsin, but do you think he is someone who could play that position if need be in a pinch? Yeah. If, if need be, I think he could. And if he gets throughout this first year and that leverage that you were talking about earlier, it does become an issue. I think that might be his future just because like I said, the, the rarity of a six, six center, but I I just, I, I think that is something that'll be a benefit as opposed to a last resort for him. You know, it'll be like his next contract or whatever ends up being, Oh, he could also play guard. If we've got a center, we really like for next team or, you know, whatever ends up being, I think that becomes a plus in his, game as opposed to, well, he couldn't hack it at center. We've got to move him to guard. So I think there's flexibility there. I really personally don't think that – if he was going to play a different spot at Wisconsin, it was probably going to be right tackle because the way that they've played, uh, the athleticism that they like to have on the edge at right to, or at the tackle spots, they had a good ta- uh, left tackle in uh, Jack Nelson the last few years. Uh, I think if they were going to move him outside, it would have been the right tackle. But he was just so good at center – that they were like, all right, let's make sure that we've got this guy locked in here and making the right calls. So I think he's got the flexibility, but I don't think it's going to be something that he has to use, at least early on in his career. 
Yeah, I appreciate your insight here. Uh, where can people follow along with you if they want uh, some more insight on Wisconsin football? Yeah, Seabart WSJ on Twitter, and then BadgerExtra.com is where we post everything that we do Badger content-wise. So you can check it all out there. Love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Yep, anytime.